Hey guys, welcome to the Pyramid Insider. I'm Tyler Patner. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Benjamin Pioneer Airbo. Get it out of the box and see what it comes with. All right, guys, so we got everything laid out that comes in the box with the gun. Gonna start with the manual here. Uh, definitely read the manual because this is not your conventional PCP air gun, so definitely check that out. Also, pay close attention on the back. We got two spare O rings for your fill probe, so make sure you keep those in a safe place. We also have the 20 MOA droop compensated rail. Uh, this is gonna come in handy when it's time to mount the scope, and we'll talk about that then. We also have our 375 grain arrows, which are hollowed out in the back. Obviously, you don't need a conventional knock, as this is going to go around the shaft of the gun here. It's a 100 grain field tip, so 375 grains total. Uh, obviously, if you replace that with some kind of broadhead, that's going to change your weight and your potential energy. Gun is capable of up to 450 feet per second, about 168 foot-pounds with the arrow set up like you just saw it. We also have a bunch of decals. One of the biggest questions we've gotten so far in anticipation of the release of the Pioneer was, is it gonna be available in a black finish? Well, guess what, guys? It actually comes in a black finish, so that's huge. If you want to include the decals, which are real tree camo, you certainly can, but you don't have to, so it's totally up to you. Personally, I'm gonna keep it in this nice, stealthy black finish. I think it looks kinda of sleek. You also get a Benjamin sling included, and the gun does have swivel studs on it already if you choose to mount the sling. You're gonna get your proprietary fill probe, which is set up with a male quick disconnect fitting on the end of it. Uh, this is gonna slide right into the end of your air cylinder here, very easily, to go ahead and fill. Uh, ours did come with about 1,000 PSI of air in it already. So make sure it's holding air, obviously. If you get yours empty, I would think you might have a little bit of an issue there. The gun does have a Weaver Picatinny style rail, so it does come with Weaver Picatinny style rings as well. These are a high profile ring. Uh, you got four screws on top there. Obviously, you got your side screw to open the ring up to mount it onto the full length rail or the 20 MOA drooper rail if you choose to mount that. We have a 6x40 scope here with an adjustable objective. Comes with these elastic covers with the clear see-throughs on them. Uh, it does have a specialized reticle. We're going to cover that later. Uh, this is specialized uh, for a gun sighted in at 30 yards, so you're going to sight this in at 30 yards, and the holdover markings in the scope are actually going to correlate to specific distances. So that's a very important and something you need to pay close attention to. Moving on down, the last thing we have is the quiver and quiver mount setup. Uh, this is all gonna come together. We'll show you guys how to install this, uh, but this is gonna allow you to hold the three arrows that it comes with on the side of the bow. And obviously, if you're gonna buy some extra arrows, you're gonna wanna keep the three on there just in case you need a follow-up shot. Certainly can't hurt to have it. And it's very, very lightweight, so it's not gonna add too much to the gun. So talking a little bit about the gun itself, guys, we do have a gauge on the end, as I showed you before. Also have your fill port for the uh, proprietary connector that comes with the gun. Uh, it's a little bit of a new one for Crossman. They usually go with quick disconnects that are actually on the air cylinder, but this time they're going with a fill probe setup. Nothing wrong with that, just different. You have your arrow rest or your barrel, I suppose you could call it, and this is going to actually propel the air behind the arrow and then out of the muzzle. On the bottom here, we have our front swivel stud sling mount, which is going to match the one in the back as well. On top, we have a full-length Weaver Picatinny rail. You're going to either use an optic dedicated on here, potentially some open sights if that's how you choose to use it, or you're going to use the 20 MOA rail and install that on here with the six-power optic that comes with the gun. So the trigger itself, you do have a very standard front safety here. So it is in the safe position now. Flip it forward to make it hot and ready to fire. A two-stage trigger that's coming with the gun, very similar to the Benjamin Bulldog. That's the gun that this was designed upon, obviously, sharing many similarities. 
Now you got a nice ergonomic grip here. Uh, fits the hand pretty nicely. I don't have very big hands, but seems to fit quite nicely and, and shoulders nice. Gun weighs about seven pounds out of the box. Not too bad at all, not cumbersome and nice and short. So next thing we're gonna talk about is how to cock and load the rifle. Uh, first we'll talk about loading it. We're gonna take one of your arrows. Again, it's hollowed out for a reason here, folks, because it's going to slip right over the end of the arrow shaft. Now, you always wanna have the green fletching or green vein up. Okay, that's important to note as well. We're gonna slide it all the way back on and it presses, you kind of get a little bit of feedback right at the end there, and it kind of locks itself in. So there you'd be ready to go. And then we're gonna come back to the cocking lever. Now this is probably the biggest design change here that is going to be the most influential in my opinion. Uh, this is actually your draw weight or your cocking effort. It's about 10 pounds, but it is a upward lever design. So you're simply gonna pull it up like that, and then all the way back. There's really nothing to it. Effort-wise, very, very easy. This is the biggest one. For handicapped hunters, uh, for really young shooters as well, this is gonna be, well, this is gonna make the gun usable for everyone. And that's huge, especially when you think about having a 70 pound draw weight on your archery bow, or even heavier draw weights on your crossbows. Now you can leave this cocked, and in the field, you're more than fine to do so. Obviously, you'd want to keep the gun on safe like you have it here. If for whatever reason your shot opportunity passes and you need to decock it, very simple. You just bring this up again, take the gun off safe, pull the trigger while holding the cocking lever. You see it snap forward a little bit and you bring it down nicely. And now you're decocked and you can put it back on safe without having to worry about anything. All right, guys, let's talk about mounting the quiver. First thing you're gonna do is grab this extension piece right here. It's got a nice little Picatinny slot on it. We're gonna take our Allen key, which is of course included. Find a spot that's comfortable for you. I'm gonna go pretty far up on this one. Kind of rock it into place, slide it into the back of the slot that you select and simply tighten it down. Next step, we're gonna mount our quiver. So first step that we have to do is actually mount the quiver attachment piece. So we're gonna grab our quiver Grab our attachment piece, simply press fit it in, then we're gonna screw it in. Now, it comes with two Phillips head screws. We're simply gonna place them in there. You will need a screwdriver for that. They're pretty small, I got one here handy. So we're just gonna screw that in, get that nice and sunk up, and then we're ready to move on to the next step. So now that we have that installed, what we're gonna do is go ahead and install the final attachment piece onto the actual quiver holder here. So that piece has this nice little lever on it. Now you notice when I flip that lever this way that it, this little circular bit pops up here, that's actually gonna lock us into place on the quiver attachment. So if we turn the gun on its side here, give us a better view. This is gonna install like so. Now I'm gonna flip it that way so it's flat here. And then I'm gonna take the two provided Allen screws and sync them up with these holes. Give them a nice little start there. Got that nice and tight on there. Now we're actually gonna mount our quiver onto the quiver holder. So we take our angled piece, line it up there, simply slide it on. Now we're gonna flip this over to lock it in place. Nice and solid on there, not going anywhere. So now that we've got our quiver installed, we're gonna put the arrows in the quiver. Just one at a time, you're gonna to wanna to place it in the foam and then snap it into place on the quiver. The nice thing is, is that this foam is actually cut for a broadhead. So if you do use broadheads, you should have no problem using this quiver setup. Now that we've got the quiver and arrows installed, see how she feels here. Doesn't seem to add too much weight. Feels pretty good so far. Let's get the scope installed and see how it feels. So now we're gonna install the scope. I am gonna use the 20 MOA droop compensated mount for it. I'd recommend you do the same. The scope reticles actually designed to utilize that 20 MOA mount. So if you don't use it, those hash marks inside of the scope really aren't gonna correlate. You're gonna to have to do all that guesswork on your own. And Crossman's already done it for you. So that's what I would recommend doing. All right, so we've got the mount here. We've got two screws that are gonna secure it to the rail on the side. Now this is a weaver to weaver style connection. 
So we're going to loosen these up to allow us to fit it over. One thing to consider when you're going to mount this is you need to put it far forward enough that the back of the scope isn't going to interfere with your cocking arm here. So I'm going to move it up just a bit. Give it a good bit of spacing there. And we're just going to cinch this up. All right, that's good. Now we're going to move on to installing the rings onto the rail. Now I've already pre-loosened these a bit. Uh, finding the right positioning for you is going to be a, a bit of trial and error initially. Now I've set up a ton of guns. I have a good idea of what I want my eye relief to be and where I want the scope mounted. So I have a fair idea of where I'm going to put these rings to give myself a little bit of room to play with the scope. Other than that though, just to show you, you get them installed right like so. And we'll do a final tightening of these once we get the scope on and everything, just to make sure that everything is locked down as best as it can be, because once we get it installed, we want to go to sight it in, and make sure it's good to go, that we don't have to change anything after that point. Now I'm going to leave these on fairly loose to begin with, because I do still need to play with the alignment of the scope in terms of getting it centered to the bore. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and finally tighten these down. One thing to make sure of whenever you're tightening rings onto a scope, you always want to use the long end of the, of the Allen key provided here. Uh, if you use the short end, you're going to provide too much torque on that screw and potentially crush the scope tube. Most of these are actually designed so that this long end here provides just the right amount of force to tighten it down securely. Another thing I like to look for is the spacing on the uh, rings here, that that's fairly even on both the right and the left side of the scope, just so we're not getting any canting in there when we're mounting it. All right, last thing I'm going to do is tighten up the actual mounts here on the rail, and we should be good to go. All right, so we got our Pioneer Airbow all set up. Everything is installed and on it that I want installed on it. Obviously, you might want to put the decals on it with the real tree camo. You may want to install the sling. Not something I'm going to need for our purposes. We are going to have a full review of this gun coming soon. So we're going to get out to the range now, do some shooting, and we'll be back at you with the full review. Uh, Crossman calls this gun a game changer. We're going to find out. My name's Tyler Patner again. This has been the Pyramid Insider on the Benjamin Pioneer Airbow. We'll see you guys at the review.